Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 57 of the Coffee and Carving Show. I'm Alec Lacasse, and today I'm not joined by anyone. It's a strange time. I wanted to address some of the questions that people have been asking in this episode and uh, catch up with you guys a little bit. And uh, I cannot avoid the, yeah, I guess like the sadness of this podcast because Doug is not here. And uh, not only is Doug not here, uh, but Doug has, uh, he's left the show. So no longer a part of the show. And I guess that was the first question I wanted to uh, talk about. But and I don't really know how to feel about it, to be honest. I feel uh, bummed out for sure uh, that he's not. I think it came to a, uh, my surprise that it went down this way. Um, but uh, Doug has moved on. Doug has moved on to other things is the bottom line. And we're good. Doug and I are good. But we have, uh, we have parted ways as far as the podcast goes. So with that... I decided that I would record this to acknowledge it because it needs to be acknowledged, number one. And number two, um, I kind of want to ask you guys what you think. Where should I go with this? You know, what what should I do? Should I let it die? Let bygones be bygones and let it just do its thing and live on as a, a show in history? Do I try and revitalize it or, or, or at least preserve the spirit of coffee and carving show and like have people on. Um, I want to have Abby Peterson on for sure. I want to have Lucas cost on again. Um, I want to have these friends of mine on, um, on a podcast. I want to interview them. Right. So it's the question is, do I use this platform? Um, do you guys want that? Right. I don't want to, I don't want to give you something that you don't want. And it's tough because it's, it's a show that you literally, came to see because of Doug and I, and a lot of you came because of Doug and I am aware of that. And so a lot of you are going to leave because Doug is not here and I get that uh, and I don't fault you. Um, but, uh, I'm hopeful. I mean, I'm hopeful that we can do something. Um, but I also want to acknowledge that this sucks for a lot of people, including me. It's, it's weird. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to say about that. But I do want to thank uh, the people who have donated coffees, who have, have bought us coffees today, because there's a quite a, there's a quite a few. There are quite a few people. Uh, we have Deb, Bob, Mark, Gary, Erica, Bruce. Uh, thank you guys, all of you. Sincerely, I don't take it lightly. Um, I, I I hope I've never taken it lightly. I don't think I've ever taken it lightly that you guys have, uh, have been so supportive as you have. And, uh, I want to continue to be here. Uh, I want to, uh, to do this in some capacity, whether it's here or on another channel, I wanted to quickly explain the story of how this podcast got started. Um, when I was starting out in recording, uh, podcasts, I had a show called the Alec Lacasse show. It was a long format interview based show. I had Doug on. Doug was my first <laughs> ever guest. And if you go back, you can find it on the internet. Um, I'll link it below. It's, it was rough. It was, it was, it was a rough thing. I wasn't really all that good at communicating into the phone camera, whatever it was at the time. And, uh, I oh, mean, it was just pretty good. It was pretty good in the worst way. And Doug was, uh, Doug was not used to being on podcasts either. He was an experienced veteran of YouTube and, but it was just, uh, it was just funny to watch. I enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, 
but but at the same time, uh, I, I knew that I found something that I really loved. Uh, I had on a whole bunch of friends. I had Perry Shaw. I had uh, uh, Brian Booth Craig. I had so many uh, people who I looked up to uh, for years on the on that show. I only put out a few episodes. I recorded a whole lot more than ever got put up, uh, which is another story that I could get into one time uh, or another in the future. But the point is... Um, I've, I've enjoyed doing podcasts, uh, for like, I don't know, the last probably like two or three years. And, uh, and Doug and I were, were talking, I had him on, I think for like the second or third time. And he's like, well, you might as well have me as your co-host at this rate. If you're going to keep inviting me, you only had like, you know, 10 shows and I've been in three of them or two of them. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's a great idea. You know how fun that would be if we had a co-host situation where we both kind of banter about carving and talk about what we've been up to and. I mean, how many people are there realistically that are doing exactly what we are doing? You know, carving on the internet, right? Those are two things that you just don't see connect a lot. And that's, I guess, the beauty of the Coffee and Carving Show. And that's why I enjoyed doing it so much is I knew there weren't a lot of things like it on the internet. So it was fun. And it was niche. Of course, it's niche. Of course, it's not going to be this big thing. But we we loved it. And, and, I, and I still love it. And uh, we started at that point. Uh, he he said, you know, yeah, you know, we could do that. And so, you know, I told him, you know, I'm a peon in the world of YouTube. You're a superstar of YouTube. I'll edit the videos. I'll, you know, I'll post them, whatever. And I was so happy to do so. So jazzed about this. Uh, I, I called my wife. I told my parents. I told everyone I knew about it just in pure excitement to be uh, starting something with Doug. He's an awesome, an awesome guy. And, uh, so we did that and we, we put out over a year's worth of episodes, like a year and what, four weeks of episodes. And, uh, a lot of them were just so much fun. And, uh, we come to this point, it's kind of a crossroads where I'm not exactly sure what's to happen with it. I want to do something with it. I know that, but I, I don't want to turn it into something that it doesn't need to be. So, um, I do, I do care about it. I want to have guests. Uh, I want to, I want to have folks, you know, that are a part of it in some way, you know, someone to balance my chaos. Right. <laughs> Cause that's what, that's what I need in some ways, some instances. So anyway, it's getting sad. I'm going to take it out of the sad place now. Uh, and, uh, try to get some semblance of, uh, the show. And, uh, so I'll just say <laughs> really quickly what I've been up to. And let me just say before I get into that, if we do end up keeping the show uh, and, we, and we do the interview thing, obviously we'll do that. We won't, uh, I, I won't probably be blabbing in the camera this whole time for each episode. So don't get too afraid about that. Don't think that's going to be what's happening. So anyway, uh, I've been up to a few things this week. I, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to talk about it. Because uh, it hasn't come out yet, but and I haven't even I just start. I just started writing it, but uh, I'm coming out with a book, and I'm very excited about that. And it's going to be on carving faces, and I'm not going to say any more. And don't ask me anymore <laughs> because I don't want to tell you right now because I'm not even probably supposed to mention it. So, but I'm very very excited, and I've had. Uh, I'm 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 not really a, a writer, of course. I mean, I, I was always okay at writing, but, uh, never a writer. So I, uh, called my good buddy, Marco Micheletta. He came over and he helped me to kind of organize my thoughts for this first portion of the outline. We worked on that earlier this week, Marco. Thank you so much, man. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, it just means a lot that you were willing and uh, able to kind of take my chaotic energy, rein it in, organize all of the themes of the book, and just be so helpful. Um, it does mean a lot. So, uh, don't, I don't take that for granted. Uh, so I did that. And then I've been playing this trip to, uh, a good friend of mine's house. Uh, he's down South. I'm, I'm up in Michigan. For those of you who don't know, I'm near the Detroit area. And I went down seven hours, seven hours and 20 minutes to Webster, Kentucky to, uh, carve with, uh, one of the best chainsaw carvers in the world named Abby Peterson. He, like I said, he's my buddy and we've collaborated together on multiple projects in the past. And, uh, this was our, I think fourth collaboration. And I went down, we, we roughed out, uh, three busts. He roughed them out, uh, 
11 bus. I said three, 11 bus. And we spent two days, two full days of carving uh, and detailing and shooting the breeze, making a big fire in his barn. I slept up in the top of his barn area there. He's got like beds and a really nice setup there. So I brought my buddy Sam with me. And uh, if you don't know, Sam is my video guy. He's a uh, 16 year old video and wood carving phenom. He's a really bright kid. And uh, yeah, we've just been able to uh, work together. He's helped me with the uh, online carving school uh, for the last uh, few years, actually a couple of years now or a year. And uh, it's been a huge help to me. So thanks to Sam, shout out to him as well. I forgot to mention my coffee. I've got a black coffee here, mug. Mom made this mug. Pretty cool, right? Check out my mom's mugs. I think they're on the internet. I don't know. Lacasse Jenny on Instagram. Put your order in there on the gram. But uh, I went and uh, we made these 11 bus and I got home. And I started to unpack my car. And lo and behold, I found Abby Peterson's favorite electric and only cordless electric steel chainsaw in my truck. I, apparently in a rush, drug that chainsaw out to the outside of my car, and Sam kindly loaded my car up while I was finishing a carving right before we left, said he saw the chainsaw, thought it was odd that he didn't see it before, but loaded it in anyway, saying to himself that, yeah, if Alec loaded it next to the car, it must go in the car. And uh, Abby and I chatted on the phone after uh, many phone calls. He, he did not pick up uh, when I initially found out. And uh, respond to text. And come to find out, he called me back from his assistant's phone, saying, "My phone is dead, and it won't come on. And I think you took my phone charger. Did you accidentally take my phone charger?" Sure enough, look at the wall in my kitchen. There's a giant carving, a block plug-in, uh, you know, block with his name written on it in Sharpie. Oh, excuse me. Lost the professional show here, but yeah, yeah, I was just beside myself. I stole his chainsaw. I stole his battery. There's his phone charger. <laughs> and uh long story short uh i sent it back to him with a little gift in there because i felt terrible i basically took his uh his his the saw he was going to use to finish up the carvings that we made that day right? so the the chainsaw was an electric cordless battery saw that you would use indoors most of the saws are gas so he couldn't actually finish the carvings like he had planned until um hopefully tonight because he's got the saw. Uh, I overnighted it to him, so which wasn't cheap, by the way, come to find out. So that's what I've been up to. Uh, here's one of them. This is one that just Abby did for me right before I left. He roughed it in in about 20, I don't know, maybe like 35 or 40 minutes actually. But I mean, it's huge. Look at this compared to my hand. So Abby's a literally world champion Carver. I mean, he's won 17 or 18 national and international competitions. There'll be Montana, um, Chatwind, and British Columbia. So anyway, amazing guy. So it's always inspiring and helpful to be uh, working alongside somebody who happens to have all of the strengths in uh, areas that I'm weak. And uh, so, you know, he's just so fast and he's so good at figurative work. Uh, and just spending time with him was uh, really, really neat. Uh, learning the chainsaw skills and doing some hand carving on the faces and just uh, making these busts. So we split them up in half. We did a, a draft pick. So we flipped a coin. He won. So he got first pick and he picked my absolute favorite carving because he has good taste. The man has good taste. And he felt bad because he could see it in my eyes that I wanted that thing. So that's why he roughed out this for me because he's a really nice guy. And it was this basically this style of carving, like a half face uh, based on a Simon Rourke piece. So Shout out to Simon. And uh, that's been it. I mean, uh, I worked on, uh, over the new year, quite a few little whittles. Uh, you've probably seen them. I can show you a couple. Um, let's see what I do with my mouse. Here. Here's one. Here's another. I made uh, a mouse. A little tiny mouse. <laughs> He's actually pretty cute. I kind of like him. This is uh, in a one by one piece of basswood. So it started out just a simple one by one. I attached this 
but uh, there's an instructional video up on YouTube for that, which is kind of cool. And, uh, and then I also did this. And this was a project for my school. It's a whittle project, a, a little whittle project, a heron, a kind of a pond base you can see there. So that was super fun. It's a two part video on the school. And you can check that out in the link below as well if you're interested in checking out the school. So there's my shameless plug. But that's what I've been up to. Um, <clears throat> my uh, media, what I've been listening to lately and taking in, uh, been really into Lizzie McAlpine. She is a wonderful singer with a beautiful, beautiful voice. Um, it's very pure sounding and she has like this incredible uh, falsetto and vibrato and control. I think that's the characteristic of her voice that I most admire is she has so much control over her pitch. She can just flutter in and out of notes just with perfect pitch. And, and it's just, it's just a gorgeous sounding voice, very relaxing. So she has a new song out with Jacob Collier. I think it's C-O-L-L-I-E-R or something like that. And that's a really good jam if you're into some saucy jams. That's it. We got it done pretty quickly today. Um, you know what? Why don't we answer some emails? I kind of did it backwards. It goes, uh, you know, emails, then media. But uh, there's some questions on here, and uh, we might as well answer them. Some of them are for me, and we'll answer those. Tabitha says, Alec, I noticed you using your work sharp to get the polished edge in your knife. Where do you get the leather belt for it? Um, it's not a leather belt. When you order the Ken Onion Workshop sharpening system uh, and the special extra attachment, that uh, is also an offering there when you go on their website. I'll link that below as well. You'll see uh, the Ken Onion expansion set or expansion kit offers a uh, already in the package a fabric wheel or a fabric uh, band. And that's what I'm using there to uh, apply the polishing compound to. So that's that. Good question, Tabitha. Ronnie uh, asks about, uh, actually, skip that. That's just a comment um, saying that, uh, you know, likes the new videos. That's cool. Uh, Michael says, uh, what's our, our take on bandsaws? I'd like to get your take on bandsaws, he says. I know nothing about them, uh, but I like the idea of splitting my basswood and doubling the amount of carvings I can produce out of, of blocked wood and removing big sections as a time saver. Uh, can you recommend brands, sizes, etc.? And uh, to be honest, Michael, I am not a bandsaw expert. Um, I, I don't know a lot about various brands of bandsaws. I know some of the more popular ones are uh, Rikon, uh, R-I-K-O-N. I've heard great things about those. Grizzly makes one. Um, even even Ryobi, a lot of the tool makers now are coming out with uh, nice portable systems that are, that are great. Um, but the reality is, uh, and there's also Jet and Delta. I don't know if Delta still makes them, but Jet does for sure. But it's kind of like asking, it's like Victor Frankl's thing of like, what's the best move in a chess game? Well, depends on where you're at in the game, right? So I don't know enough about what you need, Michael, to say exactly what, cha what chainsaw, what bandsaw that you need. But let's just say you want something that does a lot. Well, you want something with a decent uh, cut height. Uh, there's another term for it that's escaping me, but really what you're looking for is a, uh, a throat that is greater than like 12 inches, right? If you're trying to cut a big piece of wood, you're only going to be limited by the height of the, of the block of your bandsaw. So get a bandsaw that says uh, like 12 inch, 14 inch, you know, 10 inch could work as well. Um, but you want something that, uh, that can really handle a lot of, a lot of wood right? It's even a nine inch bandsaw. It's another thing probably work for most people who are carving smaller carvings. Um, the only other thing that I would say is uh, super uh, important aside from properly setting up your bandsaw is the bandsaw blade width. You want a, something, if you're carving uh, smaller bits and you really want to get a tight rough out, you're going to want to use a thinner blade, a thinner blade, like a quarter inch, uh, a, a, you know, a, a half, half inch at the max, right? Probably not less than that. Like a three eighths inch, uh, is, uh, better half inch quarter inch even is, is even better yet for getting in like these tight areas, right? You're band sawing. 
uh, because you want to be able to turn the blade and if it's too thick, it won't articulate. So you'll see in some of my whittle videos, I'm using a three, excuse me, I'm using a three eighth inch uh, bandsaw blade as I burp when I'm talking. Uh, and that that's pretty thick. It's pretty wide. So it doesn't articulate and you can hear it kind of squeaking and getting all chaotic and not quite turning enough. So that is a consideration to, to keep in mind that you want a thinner blade in terms of the blade width and that will make it easier for you to articulate. If you're doing bigger stuff, if you're doing, I don't know, log cutting, if you're trying to do like some hobbyist uh, milling in your shop, then you're going to want a thick half inch blade, three quarter blade, uh, something really rowdy with uh, a lot of teeth per inch. TPI, I think it is. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, the universal blade goes, I would go with a very aggressive, a low TPI, which means more, uh, less teeth rather per inch. So there's smaller, there's, there's less teeth, sorry, but they're bigger teeth. And you're going to want to go with like probably a quarter inch. It's a pretty good universal width for cutting out blanks for bandsaw projects. And uh, you lose some of the ability to cut straight with the thinner blade as well. It tends to want to wobble and be a little bit less consistent. So keep that in mind as well when you're picking out your blades. Uh, but, uh, you know, they range in price. I mean, you can pick up a nine inch bandsaw uh, for a few hundred bucks. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the bigger ones are going to cost you probably three, four, you know, a lot in some cases, like two plus thousand dollars for the really nice ones. So hopefully that uh, <laughs> I didn't talk your brains off, um, Michael, but great question. So Rich uh, is uh, known as Wiz in the comments, Wiz in PA. Hey, Wiz, hope you're doing well. Uh, it's always good to hear from you. And uh, he has a problem with adding feed and wax to his carvings and then painting them or vice versa, painting them and adding feed and wax. And he has a question about how to resolve that issue. And uh, I don't have a ton of experience in uh, using feed and wax as a treatment post paint, but it does depend on the paint that you're using. Uh, I'll just say this. I particularly like to use a hardening sealer uh, as a prep for the paint. So uh, I like to use a water-based hardening polyurethane that's matte. So it doesn't look shiny. It doesn't look fake. It still looks like wood. And once that dries, I paint the surface of the carving. And then after the fact, if you want to, you can go back over the, I should say, I'm using acrylic paint, acrylic paint. You can go back over with the spray. It's a, uh, I think it's a Minwax uh, spray, uh, but brush on is great too. If you're trying to really get in all the nooks and crannies, it's actually nice to use a brush on in some cases, but spray is easier. That's why I'm using it. Th this is uh, then sprayed after the fact, once you've painted it for a second spray, that will protect, act, act as a fixative to keep, you know, the, the carving in good shape for a long time, help it from getting dirty and make it easier to wipe off if it needs to be wiped off. Especially if you're using it as a kid's toy, <laughs> it's good to do that. Um, that's what I can speak to. That's been my process. You know, after the fact, once you've got that, uh, you've got your sealant, your paint, your sealant, once again, you can go back in with a little feed and wax and polish it. If you want to bring a little luster to it more than just a matte finish, that's a nice look too. So there are some, there are some options for you, uh, there rich. Hopefully that helps. Another question is uh, about Helvi from Rich saying Helvi is uh, rough out and detail knives are uh, not quite sharp enough. And he's been trying different techniques and he's interested in these MDF uh, uh, sandpaper wheels that they sell. Um, I won't mention any brands, um, but I will say that I personally... Uh, prefer the uh, the belt sand or the belt type sanding sharpeners, right? Um, there are multiple makers out there of such a product. Uh, the cheapest kind of one is WorkSharp, probably one of the cheaper ones. They make a Ken Onion uh, sharpening system that was mentioned in the earlier questions, uh, or one of the earlier questions I read, the first one. And uh, they have a fabric belt, uh, multiple sandpaper belts. When you buy the extension kit alongside of that for knives with the Ken Onion sharpening system, that's worth checking out. I like that. It's, it's fairly inexpensive and uh, it does a good job for sharpening knives and gouges. But uh, definitely for gouges, uh, I'm going to go with the WorkSharp 3000. Um, that is a system that uses a glass disc. I'll show you the disc. Um, that's mounted, uh, that, that's got stuck to it some sandpaper. 
right? So this is the glass disc. You can peel the sandpaper off. This is my leather stropping wheel. If you buy the WorkSharp 3000, it comes with a strop wheel uh, as well. So I'll link that in the description below as well. That'll all be under your WorkSharp. You can just peruse their website. Uh, I recommend their stuff. Uh, it's good. And uh, some of, you know, Alex Grobovesky, I interviewed him. He's one of the world's foremost relief carvers, architectural relief carvers. And uh, that's his favorite tool for sharpening too. So I'm not just talking uh, out of, uh, out of my behind here. So that uh, is a great product. So hopefully that helps. Um, he was saying he's having problem with, uh, you know, getting the tool sharp with the tools that he has. And I'll say why I'm not as big of a fan of the MDF wheel type sharpening systems is they create a, uh, a concave um, hollow grind, which is good for chisel carving or, or chisel uh, woodworking chisels. But I do not like a hollow grind on a carving tool. It makes the tool a little bit harder to control um, when the bevel of the tool is not straight or slightly bolt bellied, a little bit rounded over so you can see the reflection coming off of it in, the, in terms of the belly. Uh, it's going to offer you a lot more control. It's going to be easier to use this way. So this is how I uh, recommend uh, people sharpen their blades with either a flat grind like this one or a slightly bellied grind like uh, comes with the uh, healthy knives. So hopefully that helps. Um, so yeah, he just says he appreciates it and he looks forward to uh, the new year and carvings that are yet to come. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Wiz. And uh, that is the true conclusion of the show. Thanks, guys, for uh, bearing with me today as I kind of adjust to things. And I understand you're adjusting to this as well. And so I don't take it lightly. I don't take the support lightly. Take your vitamins. Thank mm -hmm. you.